Hi everyone, welcome to, <clears throat> excuse me, welcome to week 17 starch experiment. I'm going to show you the supplies that we're going to use and some of the samples. Um, CC Livermore Tutors, you'll see on your, on your science sheet, we're going to use paper, cheese, bread, celery, cracker, sugar, apple slice, and potato. And we're you know, the idea is to talk about what starches and um, chemical reactions like we did in, like we learned in the balloon experiment. <clears throat> and saying that iodine and starch also causes a, a reaction. And to talk about what starch is and where they might find it and to have them, you know, make their hypothesis on which of these items would have starch in them. If you feel like your students are old enough to make a make a hypothesis on what kind of reaction will occur when the iodine mixes with the starch, you certainly can. Some of our kids have done acid-base sort of um, experiments where they've seen the litmus paper change colors. Uh, so they this might be something that they can they can hypothesize on. Otherwise, you know you can tell them we're looking for a color change. Um, but what we want to make sure that we do is we want to have them look at the color of the iodine. And um, you can see, I don't have all the different samples on here, but I would, I would even put the iodine, you know, out so that they can see and hold it up in the pipette. I really hope you can see this. So that they can see that it's this, um, that it's this sort of brownish, goldish, yellowish color that it looks really dark brown in the container, but as you swirl it around, you start to see the real color. And so we're gonna be, as scientists, observing what changes do and do not occur. So um, iodine is not something that should, um, should be you know, unsupervised with children. So if you have youngers, this is really a tutor demonstration. If you have older students and you want to monitor them putting the drop on one of the samples, you certainly can. Uh, I would just really caution you to make sure your students are careful. It stains, it's toxic in some ways, so please, I think, I don't know, I'm saying it's toxic, but let's see. It just says, if swallowed, get medical help at poison control right away, so toxic. <clears throat> so just be cautious and use your best judgment. All right, so we'll just get a few drops in here and put each drop onto the sample. And you, know, you can even spread it around a bit. And in this case, um, the paper does have starch, the celery doesn't, and the cracker does. And you will see a darkening of the color um, where it starts to look really inky black um, in the presence of starch. Might even be better over there on the side. <coughs> so sorry. Okay. So actually on this particular cracker right away it doesn't look like there's starch in it and it could be a layer of butter and salt on the top that's preventing it from looking starchy. But if we break it open and you look at the inside here, you, and where the hole is of the cracker, you can see that there's definitely a reaction. Uh, so that's actually, that's a good discussion point. And the paper definitely has starch in it. I hope you can see all of that. Let's see. Yeah, I think you can. It's not super obvious, but let's see. There we go. So you can see how the color of the iodine on the celery remained that yellowy goldish color, but on the paper and on the cracker, it definitely darkened and turned into more of an inky.